So this is my little review of the Saddleback ID wallet. And I'll tell you, uh, in general I'm not really going to try to do a, a uh, review like all the functions and all the pockets and all that because uh, everyone's done that before. Uh, we've all seen these before. There's not that many pockets. There's not that many functions. Um, there aren't that many options really. But my main interest in this type of thing is basically uh, industrial design. I'm, I'm also very interested in how it's designed as a tool. Uh, to do its job and that's what really this review is going to be about it's more of a design critique and if you like uh, what I end up saying here or you find the, the another perspective interesting let's just say that uh, give me a thumbs up or like or whatever and maybe I can do more I also have two other bags of theirs and also another wallet um, I did start doing a, a, a video like this for the uh, classic briefcase that I have, but I just didn't finish it because that, that came out very long. And instead of putting that out first, I thought I'd do something simpler and something everyone's familiar with, which is this ID wallet thing. Now, I have some pictures when I first got it, and I think I even compare it to um, my other wallet. What I do like about what I, I've been noticing one thing is that you can see the leather. I mean the uh, in this case the pigskin leather in between wherever it's sandwiched in for the uh, the different layers of the wallet you know and actually I kind of like that one reason I like this uh, new version of the black is that the pigskin li liner is just left natural or you know whatever close enough is to that as opposed to being black or blue or green or brown or whatever and then in the edge you don't see anything. I like seeing the, the different layers there. So anyway, besides the fact that what everyone's already said, uh, yes, it's got the ID pocket here and then you have another place for cards here, you have a place for money inside and then you have two more pockets here. You know, maybe this will help somebody out there either decide to get whatever something they want, this or not this, instead get something better that suits you better. Or um, someone who already has it who might not have some problems with it, maybe they can try some of these tricks and see if that helps them. So one of the first things is that when you get it right at first, this is all brand new, of course, everything's tight. Now, to get your uh, ID wallet out, I mean your ID out, it's not that easy it's quite tight or even if you have a lot of cards and, and money in it one time let's pretend you don't normally walk around with it completely bursting like this is uh, suddenly this is too tight one way to go about it is to push your thumbs in opposite directions so that you're trying to twist you're trying to twist the card left and right within within the pocket so by pushing it like this uh, you're you know pushing and pulling it away so that you sort of break the grip that'll make a big difference in uh, getting it out now mine is I've had it for a while uh, for several months at least so it's uh, pretty much smoothed out and a little bit stretched out because I, I whenever I use it I don't use it every day but whenever I do use it I always put my, my driver's license and my uh, medical card here just because I don't know it seems like a good, a good idea <laughs> what the hell you gotta put it somewhere I have two cards in there right now. Uh, this one, hoping to get my name off of that. That that would be horrible. But that's the one card there. I I I didn't cover it up. I hope hope no one takes my name off of that. I'm sure someone can figure out how. <laughs> you guys are all so damn smart with the computers. And there is a bunch of cards in here right now. I have I think uh, two. There's another super secret card. Is that a Batman? Oh my god, is that Bat? Oh no, it's not. It's this guy. <laughs> um, that's got two in there. This has got, I think, two credit card, plastic cards, and then a couple of paper cards. So this holds quite a lot. But the reason this thing is so tight and puffy is because I don't usually carry this much cash. Uh, by the way, here's a little trick for you. If you have a lot of money, paper money in here, you're trying to, or whatever paper, you're trying to shove in there, this is back when money meant something, by the way. This is a 1957 bill, if you, for those of you who care. 
what you can do is use two other cards and sandwich your cash in between those cards because when you if you just take the the paper loose and you just try to shove it in there it starts to hang up and pretty soon you have a lot left over and pretty soon just rips and whatever if you don't spend it fast enough so that kind of becomes a mess especially when you st stick it in your pocket so what I figured out is that you can put it in between two cards let's put it in between something interesting oh you got my name this time it's Lee Cardholder so for those of you who know you can look me up online Lee Cardholder sometimes I go by preferred customer it depends who the person is <laughs> Who I'm dealing with. Um, you can use these two cards on the outside of your of your paper bills to use it sort of as a as a harder thing that'll get into the wallet better, and, and in a way sort of a, a shoehorn. Now you can use that to get them in there. As you can see, it goes a lot lower. The cards help it get way in there. Now, if you had a lot of bills in there all the time it would probably stretch out and it would just be easier overall in, in the end and this is how many bills let's find out and by the way this is international these, these will hold uh, bills from other other uh, countries so here I have one two three four five six seven eight and uh, these bills are there because they're all about the same size. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, U.S. government started using the Chinese printer to make our money now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, is that a coincidence? <laughs> I don't know. These are clearly bigger. Right. They're taller. Whereas it's exactly where you don't want it to be bigger. So if you take like a couple of these, I think I have three, yeah. So you have three of these. So what is that? 40 pounds. It doesn't weigh 40 pounds, but it is 40 pounds. How's that? How's that for a riddle? What doesn't weigh 40 pounds, but is 40 pounds? Um, and you can shove it in there. And of course, you're going to bottom out because you know this is longer than the wallet when this is all the way down for example to the top it's not quite to the stitching and this is this is longer than the entire thing including the stitching this is longer than the entire wallet so there's no way that's going to fit inside just FYI now if you don't care fine it's going to stick out it's going to stick out you have a place to put it or you don't you you're whatever you're not bothered Fine, you could always double it up, of course. I mean, quadruple it up in a way. And shove it in this way. And then it'll fit. I just leave it like that. But that's obviously adding to the th layers upon layers upon layers there. So, that that's my big, uh, one of my big tricks there for this, how to get money in and out. I use the cards as a sort of a shoehorn thing. And you can see here the size of money. Other videos uh, gave the advice of don't put the numbered embossed cards on this bottom pocket because it'll soak right through the the pigskin lining and the leather and you'll end up with the numbers being embossed across here and as it slides in and out of your pocket it polishes that high points which is what it does basically it embosses the uh, numbers there I don't think anyone's going to steal your credit card from those numbers but it probably looks kind of ugly is what I think people are saying the similar to the way you can see the shape of the card here you know, it's empty, there's nothing in it, but you can still see the shadow of the card there embossed into this pocket. So I took their advice and I never did that. Whenever I put a card in here, it was always with the number side on the other facing in, or it's just a smooth card that doesn't have any embossing. Some of them I've seen don't have this stitching across this uh, edge of that pocket. Now why is that important? Well to me that's important because uh, these two pockets are made for cards, and they're everything is lined in this pigskin. And this pocket is just the inside of that pocket, and this is just another piece of leather on the outside, which doesn't have any lining. But why have the stitching? Some of them I've seen don't, don't have the stitching, 
And some people have written in and complained about that, and I was wondering, what's the point of that? Well, to me, the point is that because these pockets are specifically designed for cards, um, and they're all lined in this uh, nice pigskin for, for durability, etc., that means these two surfaces between the leather and the cow leather and the pigskin are glued together, probably. And if they're not sewn, it's just the glue. And every time you are putting a card in here, the edge of the card is constantly hammering into the top of that edge. Now that might not matter the first 10, 20 times. Even the first uh, thousand times, it might not matter. But if you're going to keep this thing and use it for 10 or 20 years, eventually that edge is, is going to start to come apart and fray, the glues dry out. There's all kinds of potential failure. Now, it still may never fail. It still may never fail. What I'm saying is, if it's stitched together, it will not fail. Then there's no way. Because even if it starts to split a little bit at this edge, it's going to stop at the stitching. It can't continue. It can't go on. So this may split a little bit, but then for after that is secured, it's never going to, it's never going to fail. You're always good. And to me, that's good design. That's something I, I like. On a side note, I noticed that the older, the older saddlebag bags, I don't know if they have older versions of this uh, ID wallet, but the older bags use the, a, a different font for saddleback. And some people, I don't know why, they don't like, uh, what's it called? I think it's called papyrus. I don't really care that much about fonts. Uh, as long as it does the job, it's legible. And I don't f have a problem with papyrus. I thought it was always kind of a clever solution that was easy and cheap. So in the beginning, people start their company. It's probably the prettiest, you know, free, uh, readily available font. And people use it. So then after a while, they got their own stamping here with a stylized name, which I actually like better. I think this is actually a very good, uh, very nice looking stamp. But I'm, I was never against the papyrus version. I just think this looks better. Um, and, and so that all the people who really hate papyrus because whatever, you know, they also hate Comic Sans and they hate all, <laughs> they have all their preferences, you know. Um, but I think this looks fine. I don't really care either way. I'm not sure about the dog. To be honest, we, I didn't, when I first heard about Saddleback, I just heard the name and I started investigating, oh, okay, here are their products and that's cool and whatever. And then I saw this image, and I thought, oh, that's a saddle. And I just didn't think twice about it, and I, I moved on. Later on, I'm like, but how is that a saddle? What, what's going on with this thing? <laughs> and then I don't think I ever really realized what it was until I read somewhere that it's, oh, it's a picture of a dog with a sombrero on his, around his collar. Although I'm not uh, one of those people who hate dogs or hate the idea that he put that on there. He loved his dog. It was his, you know... A companion for you know whatever it was 10 15 years of his life um, and uh, it was at the beginning steps of the saddleback company is when the dog was around so if the, if the owner wants to you know, give a little memo uh, memorial to the uh, to his uh, loyal friend there what what the fuck who care what do I care as long as it's not like blatantly in the in the way or I have to look at it all the time and that's that's basically the gist of it. It's not not a complicated tool. It's not a complicated piece. Um, but I think it's a very nice little pocket wallet. I don't want to carry the full wallet with like all the cards and all the cash and all the you know, whatever. I don't need all that. So I just put my few basic things in here: my ID, one credit card, maybe some cash, and I'm get on with it. Put this in my front pocket. So anyways, these are the two now that I have. So I just thought I'd give you a little comparison to the colors, really, is what this is about. When they're both basically new. This is a few weeks old, and I have a video of it pre-4, which I may insert here. But here you can see them next to each other. The plain black and the, uh, and the carbon. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's on my own shadow. <laughs> I was like, who's that? <laughs>
<laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs>